Curator in the Exhibitions Engagement and Cultural Connection Branch at the Australian Museum. That's the show for this week. Join us again next week when we mark NADOC Week at the Sydney Opera House with veteran musician and entertainer Uncle Vic Sims. Speaking Out is on Facebook and you can email the program speakingout at abc.net.au. We would love to hear from you. I'm Larissa Berend and this is Speaking Out. All right. This is going to be good, isn't it? A good book, a difference of opinion, a review with bite. Sounds like the bookshelves, Cathy McCullough. <laughs> ah, yes, Kate Evans. But as I always say, you can't read everything. Good books actually demand time. So let us make the selection for you. Dark and fascinating writer. The Bookshelf, Fridays at midday on RN. Online, anytime. And I love her books. Go on, do your shelf a favour. Hi, Paul Barclay here from Big Ideas. Are you searching for your family history? There's a fascination in the past, knowing where you came from, what it says about your present, and perhaps offering a dream for the future. Stan Grant says history is powerful, but too much history can derail the present, and it can be a force for good or evil. And all historical fever, how history might yet be the death of us, coming up next on Big Ideas, after the news on Radio National. ABC News with David Rowlands. A request by the ABC 7.30 program to access the entire COVID vaccine supply agreement between AstraZeneca and the Australian Government has been denied. A Department of Health official said releasing the documents to the public amounted to a real and substantial risk to national security. The only published material on the contract that is likely in excess of $1 billion taxpayer dollars is a letter of intent. This comes as tension has grown between the states and federal government over vaccine supply issues. A Melbourne nurse who's been administering COVID vaccines to eligible Australians has slammed the government's management of the vaccination rollout at GP clinics. Around 500 GP centres have started administering the Pfizer vaccine as well as AstraZeneca, with 800 more clinics expected to be given Pfizer supplies this month. Amina Williams says her clinic has had most of its information from the public rather than the government and there's been a lack of guidance for GP clinics that are now administering the Pfizer vaccine. A very patronising system from the government in that uh, we've been told that we are doing things via the public. There's just constant roadblocks with uh, giving this va these vaccines. Liberal backbencher Jason Falinski says he'd like to see lockdowns lifted in certain parts.